They who brought the Stellaron onto the Siendro. What was their motive? <laughs> Will you surrender, or do you require encouragement? Abomination of Yausher. General, my power does indeed stem from the Abundance. I had some more trading to do on the other Xianzhou ships, but my main appointment was with Miss Ting Yun of the Whistling Flames Merchant Guild. In my opinion, the force that provided the Stellaron and the force that activated it have different objectives. Lord Ravager Fantilia's strategy was to create civil strife, then let it consume the Sien Zhou from within. She wanted to use the Arbor to disseminate the power of the Plague's author, and turn the Lafu into a hell of undying abominations. General, my power does indeed stem from the Abundance. But I'm the same as you. We are both enemies of Yashur. This is a chess game between eons. If you don't stand with the winners, you stand to lose. And this time, we will put the Abundance in their grave. Them were willing to work with the enemy, acquiring a Stellaron from the Antimatter Legion to try and revive the Abundance. Be it mechanical or organic, we're still dealing with composite substances. I just hope you'll tolerate my methods. Oh, what kind of medical knowledge is this? Abundance. Hmm. The revival of the Arbor is an omen. It's time for the Sienjo to choose its next path. I came here to catch one person. The one you're looking for. Is it... Blade? <sighs> he goes by Blade nowadays. Forty-five system hours ago, a Stellaron burst occurred on the Lafu. Uh, we called for port transfer and got no response, but then someone opened the Jade Gate for us. How can that be? My ship was the last one into port before the Jade Gate was shut. The Skyfaring Commission has already locked down Starskiff Haven entirely. Lacha arrived on the Lafu a few days prior to the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. 
Up until the day before the resurrection, there was nothing suspicious about his behavior. The reason I mentioned the day before the resurrection is because we have no idea what he did that day. brought the Stellaron onto the Siendro. What was their motive? <laughs> some more trading to do on the other Xianzhou ships, but my main appointment was with Miss Ting Yun of the Whistling Flames Merchant Guild. We had a business deal to discuss, but I fear it will no longer go ahead. Where does this corner lead to? I checked the map and found a gate in this open area. Look, there's a small dock on the other side. He may have left on a star skiff. Why would he leave Exalting Sanctum via a secluded dock? That's so suspicious. Yes, none of this is our concern. The journey has only just begun to... Huh? Where'd the sound go? The Sienjo has the blessing of the Rainbow Arbiter. And only another Eon Emanator would be capable of sneaking onto this ship without my knowing. We are dealing with an external threat. The Stellaron Hunters walked right into our trap, and even gifted allies, in the form of yourselves, to the Sien Joe. That Stellaron has nothing to do with us, but the Sienjo is convinced that we're responsible. My companion, Blade, has been taken away by the Cloud Knights. I want to bring him back, resolve this Stellaron crisis, and clear our names. When Fantilia took Florn, it was as if Ting Yun vanished into thin air. The Cloud Knights were only able to find her fan. She took it with her everywhere. It's currently unclear if Ting Yun was a puppet manipulated by Fantilia, or if some form of deception was used to cloud her vision. How could someone who spent over 30 years working alongside me at the Skyfaring Commission turn out to be nothing more than a monster in disguise? to the real Ting Yun. An Annie Cassiter seal, a small box, a knife, a bow, and something wrapped up tight. I wonder what this is.
I had some more trading to do on the other Xianzhou ships, but my main appointment was with Miss Ting Yun of the Whistling Flames Merchant Guild. We had a business deal to discuss, but I fear it will no longer go ahead. The Stellaron corrosion continues to flood into the ship, and yet it bypassed both the seat of divine foresight and the shackling prison. There is forethought here. Our enemy must have had access to Lafu intelligence for things to unfold in this way. I'm already prepared for the worst. Considering how the Legion operates, I fear the fate of the Skyfaring Commission Amicassador may be a bleak one. Have you three misbehaving in front of the Lafu's hotshot general? Thank you for assisting the Sienjo in this small matter. Take this person away. I will pretend I didn't see anything this time. Let's heat things up then, Kafka. Blady, listen to me. Unleash the Mara. So it begins. All of you listen to me. Stop. You misunderstand the nature of the Marastrak condition. It is not a curse unique to humankind. Foxians don't usually succumb to it because their lifespan is not eternal. Yet they are still a long-life species. The Vidyatara rely on molting to discard the old world. All long-life species are equal in the face of Mara. The healers believe that the Mara-struck condition is related to memories. Unsurprisingly, long-life species have long lifespans, but there is a limit to the brain's capacity. After centuries and millennia, a long-life species' emotional threshold becomes higher and higher. Simultaneously, their memories fade and become dull under the erosion of time, leaving behind only the most extreme and vivid recollections, which are almost guaranteed to be memories full of anguish and regret. Do you understand now? The fate of all long-life species is to no longer feel joy and happiness, left only with hatred and regret etched into the heart. Under such extreme conditions, a person's ego starts to crumble. And that is the beginning of the Marastra condition. After we arrived on the Sienjo, the Mara in him flared up so violently that even my spirit whisper couldn't suppress it. The reason you don't remember is that I wiped your memory before the operation at Herta Space Station. Listen, you are in a daze right now. You don't know who you are why you're here, or what you're going to do next. Listen, in the near future, you will encounter all kinds of perils and hardships, but... A 
As a judge and the employee of the Ten Lords Commission, I am forbidden from interfering in the affairs of outsiders. However, seeing as you came to my aid, a word of advice. Leave as soon as possible. They say the theory behind the symbols was handed down by Noose, the Wisdom Walker. The principles are so profound that in the Divination Commission, only the Master Diviner truly understands them. of the Cloud Knights. I was just transferred here from the Yao Ching. You will return to the Xianzhou often, and you will definitely continue to trouble us when you do. Therefore, forget about any farewells. These Cloud Knights aren't Mara struck. What did you do to them? Just a little persuasion to get them to listen to me. But you know all about that already, don't you? <laughs> Before that task was complete, I was responsible for protecting you, as well as teaching you general knowledge, common sense, and combat skills. Panacone, do you remember? Before Kafka's proposal, that was our original destination. The Express's records show that Penacony was a prison planet used by the IPC to exile criminals. However, following a Stellaron burst, the planet fell into the arms of Shipe. They say it's been transformed into a prosperous and ethereal realm. The family is throwing a banquet there, and they sent invitations out to the Express. I was curious about the state of the planet, so I accepted. Billions upon billions of hearts holding you in their embrace. 